when I was at Gen Con and walking around the aisles, I ran into a game that I was really excited about and couldn't wait to take a look at. I'm a sucker for dungeon crawls and no matter what type it is or any type it is, you can find me there all the way. Well, I saw this game called Secret of the Lost Tomb and I just had to have it and check it out. So is it good? Is it any better than any of the other dungeon crawls? Does it eliminate something from my collection? I guess there's only one way to find out. Let's go down to the table and take a look. Now I'm not going to go over all the rules. I'm just going to give you a brief overview of everything and just kind of show you some of the things that come with the game. Now this little piece here, this dial thing, actually goes over the player's card. And right now we're just taking a look at uh, Harrison Quartermaster or whatever. Now the numbers up top, the strength, four, that's how many dice you roll, six, how many dice you roll for dexterity, knowledge, mythos, and movement. The, the mythos, knowledge, and dexterity, the dexterity and strength are for weapons, the knowledge and mythos is usually for tests, and of course movement is to move. You also have a thing that is called audacity. And that's kept track on this card here. It gives you re-rolls or you can use it to enhance certain things. And then of course you have a health track. As you can see, turns very well. You also have courage. And depending on the courage, you'll get certain different abilities which will help you throughout the, th throughout the campaign. Also, you're allowed to carry two uh, followers with you. And sometimes more depending on what cards say. Here we have your typical enemy that you may run into. You can run into some carnivorous scabs. And as you see, they all have different kinds of health and shielding and abilities and so forth and so on. That are Everything is pretty much on the text. And you can use these little standees here to put them in if you're using the cards. But the game also comes with miniatures which you can paint and put out and play with. Here you're allowed six actions for each turn. So every time you would use an action, you would turn over this and as you can see, it would say reload. You can use, for a harder game, five actions or you can just play the easy game, which is six actions. Actions alternate and on your actions, you're allowed to do one thing. If you're going to move, if you're going to shoot, if you're going to do a test. Uh, and also you would not get a certain amount of equipment to start. Each hero has different types of equipment. Like for this guy, he's very Indiana Jones. He has a bullwhip, a, a revolver, uh, a fedora. Of course, you got to have a fedora. And of course, a leather jacket. So there's two types of enemies. There's the hard enemies, which are in red. And of course, the easy enemies, which are now, in yellow. As you yellow. see here, we have the starting tiles. And as you use your movement, you explore different areas. And when you explore a different area, you would put down another tile. Red tiles are spawning tiles. And they have certain uh, traps and so forth and so on. And spawning tiles also have is where your monsters would spawn, spawn after each, each uh, segment. As we said in the beginning, when you use up all these actions, then it's the monster phase and, and you would draw a card such as this and it will tell you exactly what happens and what levels that the monsters are drawn. The tiles are drawn every time you, you uh, check a different area or move um, where they have these comets. That means there's an open area where you can move. And if you're on level one, you would be able to go to a level one tile. But if you notice, this tile is a level two or a level three. So you would just put it aside. We'd grab the next one, which is a level three, a level three, until we found a level one. And then what we would do is turn it over and deal with the effects that may happen inside the tomb. Now there's different types of artifacts that you're sent to find or maybe you're out to fight a certain boss such as here we have Raza Zul um, and he's pretty much a baddie. He has 33 health and he's pretty hard to kill. To combat is really really easy. You add up your strength of course if you have four dice and any abilities that your card have and on fives and sixes they're a success. 
The dice, which are custom dice, uh, are 12 sided dice, but they are numbered 1 through 6 twice. So you have double the chance to roll 6s, which are criticals, and 5s, which are normal. Um, Sixes, which are criticals, automatically go through armor and do not save. Fives are hits, which will affect the armor, such as uh, our, our friend here. You would need three to three fives to break his armor, and then anything extra would go through and take away his health. Where the sixes would just bypass the three and just start taking off the 33. It has a very deep story uh, story to it and as you go through each of the scenarios you'll find that it's very deep and you have this counter here which uh, you know depending on the scenario will count up maybe you only have six turns till a vent happens or Razagul rises from his tomb to escape and destroy the world so you have all those types of different events and a nice story that goes with it where you're trying to find certain artifacts to stop Razagul so the scenarios are very well thought out and very put together and very enjoyable. And it, there's a lot, a lot of stuff that comes with this game. You get tons and tons of tiles and just tons and tons of adventure. So what do I think of it? Why don't we head up top and uh, I'll give you my Secrets final Secrets of the Lost Tomb. Plenty of content, plenty of expansions, figures, all kinds of stuff. And pretty much... Just a run-of-the-mill game for me. I liked it, and the first scenario that me and the kids played, we really enjoyed, except that it felt broken. But when we played another scenario, that was a lot better, and it just seemed more of the same kind of same mechanics, and you know, with very little variance. We liked it, but it wasn't something that we said okay, this is better than this game, or that game, or this game, or that game. Because we did sit there and do that. It's a good game, a nice system. It plays very well. It's very smooth once you get a couple turns in. I think uh, playing with six actions is kind of long. You want to play a harder version, maybe five or four actions. Uh, and... Uh, there are times that you can run through the monsters and, and the back and forth can be a little monotonous uh, at times. But overall, it's a good solid game. And if this is something you like, there's plenty of story. The stories are very well written. The components are very nice and sturdy and good. I just found that for me, it was nothing that I said, you know something... I no longer want to play X game because I have this. And uh, for me, it's, it's, it's a strong 7. 7 out of 10. It, it, it's a good game. It's just not a great game. I really like it. Don't get me wrong. But it's not something that I'm going to push any of the dungeon crawls that I have out of the way. Um, now, I do have to play some more of the expansions. Maybe that changes my mind. I guess we'll see in time when we take a look at the, uh, the expansions. Well, that's it for me, and that's how I feel about this game. If you have any questions or strongly disagree, please leave them in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Rob Warren, and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.